All right. Thanks for waiting around. I uh, this is this is the end result of having um, boiled these parts. Remember, just a minute ago they were orange. Uh, now they are black. So I'm going to put on some gloves because this stuff um, is really really dark and it gets your hands just absolutely filthy when you do this um, it's just a iron oxide but it's it's nasty it just gets everywhere and it's really hard to clean off your hands uh, and I've got an injury on my thumb so it pays to cover it up and not get debris in there so anyway this is what it turns out like this is the color get some this is the color you get, this deep, deep black. Um, so this is the face plate. You can see that it's got a little texture to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to card it off. Now I can use this carding brush and you'll see it kind of, it knocks that texture off and it leaves behind a grayish, kind of bluish color. Uh, this is going to be awfully light, so this is, will not be the last time I do this. But you can see, if you used a regular steel brush or a heavy steel wool, it would just ruin this. Uh, it would just take the finish right off, the bluing right off of it, so I don't want to do that. The steel wool really helps to get the in the cracks and crevices, um, places like in here. But if you remember in the beginning what we had, this was uh, real rusty and pitted, and we could hardly see the prancing horse. Now these pits, in these surface pits, are just never going to go away. There's nothing I can do about it, but at least this will give it an even finish. You can get a carding wheel too, which goes on a, on a drill and spins around and knocks this stuff off. That works really well too. You also remember very uh, this the barrel of the gun. Oh, I'm sorry, I bumped that. I, I popped corks in both ends of it because I didn't want to expose the barrel to a whole bunch of boiling water um, or the rusting stuff uh, after after I covered it. So uh, I popped those out and let it dry, and then I'm going to run uh, several patches down it just to dry it out and displace any water that mo or moisture that might have gotten in the barrel because I don't want to rust the uh, barrel inside. So this is what's called carding. It's pretty straightforward. And it just knocks that rust off. You can see it gives it a little bit of a blued finish. Not quite as dark as I would like. So I'm going to go ahead and rust blue it again using the exact same process of using a dauber and coating it, you know, degreasing it with some naphtha and uh, coating it with my Brownells rust bluing solution. Let it set again overnight, card it, and uh, rinse and repeat as many times as I need to to get it to the color I like. do all these pieces but you can see how dirty my gloves are getting from this uh, this stuff is just uh, real black almost like really fine charcoal oops but nice thing is I can clearly read the serial number on this gun now when I first got it it was pretty hard to read through the rust and grime uh, so Hard part of these little right angle corners. I'll get that offline. So here's the frame. This is the sort of business part of it. Take these pieces off to the side. Now this part, I'm not as concerned down here because it's covered by the grips. I'm more worried about protection on this than I am the color of it. Um, as long as it gets some bluing on there, I'm going to be okay. Um, this part I do want to be 
as good as I can get it because it is uh, seen, it is cosmetic. When the grips are on, you will see these surfaces. So um, These frames are a lot of work uh, because of all the angles and curves and things like that. Um, so that's, that's the thing about doing this process is it is a fair bit of work. Uh, and and it, it needs to be done. It, the prep work is everything doing this. If you don't take the time to prep it properly, the results will show that. Um, you know, degrease and card and do all the things that you need to do. Um, and, you know, if you need to, step away. Once the oxide has been converted like this to the black, you know, you can leave it alone for a day if you're tired of working on it. Um, but, you, you know, you just have to be careful and do the work. Do it. Um, now, you know, this gun, uh, you know, you'd never want to pay a gunsmith to do this on this gun. It just isn't worth the amount of of money he's gonna he or she's gonna charge you to do it the gun just will never pay you back for that now if it were an old family heirloom or something like that yeah I'll, I'll, you know by all means you know do what you can to preserve the thing um, but from a, an investment standpoint yeah it's not worth it now I'm doing it one for uh, video purpose just to kind of See if I can help teach people how to do these things. And uh, secondly, because it's just a neat old revolver and I've got the time and the tools and materials to do it. So I don't mind. Um, you know, it's I paid so little for the gun that it might actually be worth more when I'm done reblowing it. But most of the time, for most guns, refinishing them is, is not a good idea. It devalues them. Um, but this one was so far gone that, uh, you know, it, it, it is only going to help. There was no finish left. And unless this thing was scrupulously kept oiled, it was going to rust itself to a slow death. So this will at least give it a little more of a fighting chance um, for a few more years of good service. And... Uh, so get this this is where the brush is nice you can really get down in some of these hard to reach spaces and you can order these uh, carding brushes uh, Brownells carries all of the stuff needed to do this um, it's, uh, so there's the frame I mean you can see it looks better it'll never be um, what it once was but you know, and it's got a light kind of grayish blue finish on it now. Um, I want to put at least one more coat on there. And uh, But, you know, it, it will be better than it was. And that's what I've uh, hoped to achieve on this thing. Uh, this was the worst part of it. Not sure why. But you can see with the, the plate on there, this plate is just rusty and corroded. And there's not much I can do about it but the gun itself will be preserved and able to be shot so you know looks better it'll look better when it's when it's uh another coat of bluing and then oiled up this will will polish you can also polish this bluing surface and give it a real real fine polish which i may do on a polishing wheel, but you got to be careful because polishes are abrasive, um, so it will wear this finish clean off the gun, and you'll end up doing it all over again if you're not careful. Uh, make sure I got all of the fuzz. Uh, there's a, a a wonderful gunsmith on uh, YouTube named Mark Novak, and um, you know if you have the chance, his channel is called Anvil. And uh, he does a lot of these things and probably, you know, way better than I do. Uh, but he's just a, a, a real treasure to watch and listen to. So full of knowledge. And he calls that fine 
oxide, that orange oxide that gets on these parts from the bluing process, frog hair, because that's what kind of what it looks like. It's super, super fine. Um, I, I thought that was a, a really descriptive term of what it's like. You don't want it to form those great big gnarly chunks of rust and carbuncles that you get, um, you know, on a, on a really neglected gun. That's not what we're after. We're just after a very, very fine coating of rust. Um, so, yeah, there's sometimes these parts are really tedious to card and sand. Like I said, it's, you know, if you... If you're going to do it, do it right, take the time, put in the work, and you will be rewarded with a, a nice old gun, a good little range gun, little backup gun, or whatever you want to do with it. Um, you know, it uh, but really spend the time on the prep work. It's just... surfaces as much as we can. Alright, so I can show you kind of what the pieces look like. Let me take my gloves off now. Okay. So it shows you what these pieces look like after they've been blued and carded. Um, you know, I mean, you can still see the pitting on there. But I'm just not willing to go to the amount of work that it's going to take to remove it. I'd probably have to remove too much metal. Here's the cylinder. Remember how crusty this thing was. And you can still see pitting in there. Right, this is the worst spot on the whole gun right there. But it looks better and it will help preserve the gun. Here's the frame after being rust blued and carded. So. Anyway, till next time, uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and reapply my, degrease it and reapply my bluing solution and let it set and card it again at least one more time. But my next video will be about reassembling this gun and uh, seeing how we did. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps and we'll see you next time.